This evening, I will be answering all of your emergency communications questions. It's my goal that nobody leaves this presentation without having their questions answered. You're going to learn a whole lot about how to use handheld, mobile, and base station radios for your communication needs in an emergency. Most importantly, which is the best radio for you? Because it may be different than the best radio for me. But most importantly, I will be making specific radio recommendations at the end of the presentation. So don't leave the presentation early because you're going to miss some critical key information. The three most important questions in emergency communications are the following. Number one, who do you want to talk with? You need to be able to identify who you want to talk with and have a purpose for talking with them. We'll go into more detail on that here also. What is the distance from them? So if you're across the street, you probably don't need a radio unless there's a quarantine. However, if there is a quarantine and you live across the street, you'll be glad that you have a radio. And the third question is, what device do you want to use? The first question in the survey was, what state do you live in? And you'll notice different number of responses because I was posting the questions while the survey was live. And so we have some more responses than others, depending on when I posted the question. So as you can see here, the majority of the people who took the survey are in Utah. And that's a key point to communications. The reason why the majority of the people are in Utah is because the majority of the people who took the survey actually know each other. And so they've already built a group, a community, a support group. And so it's very, very important that you have a communication support group whether it's family members, church members, neighbors, coworkers, whoever it may be, that you establish and say, all right, we have a group. This is our group. And that, that you work together as a group. You're going to get a lot of support, much more support than you would be by yourself. So being a part of a group is very important. So who do you want to talk with? It was overwhelming that you want to talk with family. And then also the emergency response group. That I came in second because you may be out there providing service or wanting to provide service or needing to get service. And if uh, the only way you can communicate is with radios, then you need to have a radio. Or if there's other ways of communications, but you need to be able to get a hold of family, friends, church members, neighbors, and so forth. Someone said no one. This person who said no one is the leader of a women's relief society. She is a wonderful person. Her husband and her adult children have no interest in using radios. She doesn't really understand the power of the radio. Uh, she's a powerful texter, and that's how she gets a hold of people. We, some people have enormously bias. I ran into this in Texas. After Hurricane... Ike came, Galveston Island was devastated. Hundreds and hundreds of people had to leave their homes. Hundreds of homes were, uh, I don't know if they were totaled, but had water up to six feet high inside the houses. I remember going there to help with the church organized assistance that was organized through the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. And we had hundreds, if not thousands of volunteers there all at a scheduled time all in one day, enormous amount of effort had been put into organizing volunteer free assistance to the people who lived on the island. And we were there to muck out the homes and do whatever we could. We actually had job orders and times that we were supposed to be at people's houses. Uh, I show up with several other amateur radio operators and uh, we went to the stake center, which was the command center for the entire operation for these hundreds or thousands of volunteers. They all came, they're all ready to work. They were handing out their job assignments. And one of our leaders in the ham radio, and I'll refer to amateur radio and ham radio as the same thing, asked the leader of the who organized the entire service project if they wanted to use amateur radio operators to help said, no, we don't need you guys. We've got this. Don't worry about it. So the leader of our amateur radio group was very kind and said, that's fine. We're just going to set up over here. And if you need us, we'll be here. Well, within 30 minutes, that person came back because it was a complete 
100% chaos. There were no cell phones, no landlines, uh, no texting. Nobody had satellite phones. There was no communications. If you can imagine 50 trucks or 100 trucks leaving with job assignments, showing up to people's homes, they weren't there. So they, they couldn't do, they could not legally do the provide the service because the homeowner had to be there and that was signed in the agreement. So they had to come back and it was a complete mess. Within 30 minutes, the supervisor, the organizer came and said, please, 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 can you help us with your amateur radios? So we got each um, amateur radio was assigned to a crew and I was assigned to a crew and we went out and if we got to a home and they weren't there, we could call back to command center and say, all right, th these people aren't here. Where do you want us to go? They give us the address over the radio. And without having to spend 15, 20 minutes or an hour driving back and forth, needlessly wasting time, we were able to be very efficient, very effective, and bless a lot of lives. So when this Relief Society president says she doesn't want to talk to anyone, it's simply that she doesn't understand the power and the importance of emergency communications when there are no typical communications. So I don't hold her against her. She's a sweet woman. She's lovely. And I think she'll learn how important this is, hopefully well before we need it. So know who you want to talk to. That's very important. Write that down. You're going to need to answer these three questions, and we're going to give you the resources to make that happen. The next thing to remember is that those people will need to be able to talk to you. So if you want to talk to them on a radio, they need to have the same type or better radio than you. If they need, if you want to talk to them with texting, they need to be able to be able to receive texting. So we make sure that you have everything hooked up on your end and the other end also. Uh, here's a great example. This is a video that I made from a mother and her about her mo mother and two daughters here in the Idaho Falls area, and they felt it. Uh, very impressed to set up a communications or radio communications if the grid was down uh, the mother's husband good friends dear friends of ours was ill and they wanted to, the daughters want to make sure that if mom and dad needed help even if the grid was down and the cell towers were down texting was down they couldn't email they want they would be able to get hold of mom and mom would be able to get hold of them so this is the video I, I made and showed exactly which equipment they used and how far they went, actually showing on the video that it worked and how we set it up. So you can take a look at that video. Here's another video I made from a, a couple of families here, all the way up and down the uh, Idaho Falls Valley. And through using members of the group's radios, they were able to pass messages along to people who may be too far away from somebody who wants to talk to them. So watch this video on my YouTube channel, The Three Keys to Emergency Communications. You can find all these videos that I mentioned here at LDS Prepper uh, YouTube channel. To get there, just type in ldsprepper.com and it will take you to that YouTube channel. For what purpose do you want to use the radio? The vast majority of the answers were they wanted to find out what was going on in the area after an emergency. And then once they found out what was going on, they either wanted to be able to get help or give help. And that's really the backbone of why we were, were having this conversation is because we know when the time for action comes, the time for preparation is over. So we have to have things already in place and I already have these decisions made before criti these critical times come. Now, you can also use communications for family activities, outdoor sports, hobbies. Here, we're talking specifically about radios. They want to be able to connect with family. Here, the Relief Society president mentions, I don't, I have not used a radio. One person mentioned, I want to communicate with my husband uh, while he travels. Well, actually, I actually have another video on my YouTube channel called uh, GMSR Radio Goes 40 Miles. And this was specifically, we, we specifically set this up for a family who lives in, in my town, who works out of town about 40 miles, and they wanted to have emergency communications. And so we actually tested different radios and I will show you exactly what worked and what didn't work in that video. Go to uh, ldsprepper.com 
to watch that on my YouTube channel. Uh, somebody else said, I want to communicate with my grown children and find out the status of my loved ones. So it's really find out what's going on, give help, get help, and contact family. Those are really key motivators why people want to have and learn how to use radios. This third question here, how far away from your home do you want to communicate is key to understanding what equipment you need. So the majority of the people, 46% said that's 50 miles or greater. That's gonna be significant in determining which radio equipment you're gonna use in an emergency when cell towers and grid power is down. 31% said it was less than 50 miles, 29% uh, up to 15 miles, 24% uh, five miles or less. And the, everybody else said that they could walk. Somebody said from Salt Lake all the way across the valley. The other person said, I don't know, two, two and a half to three hours. I guess that they're assuming that they want to be, however long, however far they can drive in two and a half, three hours, they, that's how far they want to communicate. So what technology do you want to use? The question really is what technology will you be able to use? Because that may vary depending on the situation. Now, I was just talking to a neighbor and homing pigeons is a real thing. He has friends who actually have homing pigeons that travel between Idaho and Utah up to 500 miles and they're trained to pass messages along. So if you have homing pigeons and you can do that and you've got that set up, that's awesome. Most people are going to want to use what they're used to, and that is the cell phone. Nice thing about the cell phone, it's not limited to 500 miles. You can use it worldwide. I was just down in Bonaire doing some scuba diving last week, and I was able to talk to everybody back here in the U.S. and all over the world just with my cell phone. N nothing uh, extraordinary needed to happen. It's very simple. Email, again, worldwide. Experience I had in Texas, again, after Hurricane Ike, is a normalcy bias. There was a ecclesiastical leader, a bishop in the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, who had a generator at his house, so he's turned it on because the, the grid was down, and FEMA had come in and turned off all the cell phone towers to the general public, so first responders could use it. So you couldn't use cell phones. They forgot to turn off the texting, but as the follow-up review, they said that they would not forget to turn off texting again. If you have a major emergency, a natural disaster like we had in with this hurricane, your cell towers may be working 100%, but you may not have access for voice or text on it because FEMA may turn that off and only make it available to first responders. So at any rate, the, this bishop uh, turned on his generator, so he had electricity in his house. He turned on his computer, and he wanted to make sure that he was being a good shepherd and taking care of his flock. And he was emailing the members of his congregation. And he was getting very frustrated because nobody was emailing him back. We found this out when we had an amateur radio meeting with all the bishops and the stake president and found out that uh, he had normalcy bias. He always used email. Why wouldn't email work now? And so we have to get kind of past these things. It'd be great if email would work, but uh, in a grid down su situation, it's not. Landlines have a very high probability of working during a grid down situation. They use very, very little electricity. When we, the power was out in Texas after the hurricane, my landline still worked. And that's why I kept a landline in the house. And so I was able to call our stake president who was out of town in Colorado on his cell phone because he had cell phone service there and I had landline service at home and we were able to coordinate a meeting with the ecclesiastical leaders in the area uh, over ham radio or amateur radio. Land, again, landlines worldwide and may have better chance of working than homing pigeons, cell phones or email. Satellite phone is gonna work worldwide too. The best offer I have seen and the two cell phones that my wife and I both have is this cell phone right here. And you can see the link at the top. This will take you right to that page and you'll be able to get a $500 or $600 or $800 phone at no cost. It's Oh, it's an $895 phone. It's literally at no cost. 
The uh, monthly plan is eight is $85 and 95 cents. So you have up to a hundred minutes a month. So if you don't use them, you can use them the next month or whatever. They don't run out. So if you want to get a, a satellite phone, that's going to probably be the absolute hands down best way to communicate with people as long as they can receive a phone call. For example, if I had a sat phone in Texas and no landline, I could have walked outside, pointed the antenna to the sky and called my stake president in Colorado with no problem on his cell phone. So you can call any phone in, in the world with a sat phone. It is about $90 a month that prices come down where most things in the world are going up. So this is a great plan. It's a great company. If you want to look at getting sat phones, uh, I don't get any commissions. I just uh, recommend them. Just go to ldsprepper.com slash sat phone and take a look at their different plans. Satellite texting. This is another item that I recommend. And you can see here, this person has a cell phone in one hand and a bivy stick in the other hand. And so just pretend that that bivy stick is a cell phone network. Not just a tower, but the entire world network. Because that bivy stick, what it does, it connects to the satellite. And this will give you worldwide service. So you can just use your cell phone to text like you normally text. I think there may be a limitation to number of characters per message. But you sit, just simply connect the bivy stick wirelessly to your cell phone. Send your text message to your friend, your family, your group. It's just like sending a regular text message and you'll be able to communicate with them as long as they have text capabilities. So if the cell tower is down where you are and the cell tower is down with they, where they they are, if you both have bivy sticks, it'll work flawlessly. If they have cell service and you don't, just use the bivy stick with your cell phone and you'll be able to text them. Again, I'm not uh, remunerated in any way. I love this company. They're awesome. Uh, go to ldsprepper.com slash bivy stick to get more information. And they have uh, different packages. Again, they're getting a $320 bivy stick sat texting device. And it's, fit, it's, it's basically $66 a month. And you can also get um, solar panels or uh, EMP bags with the different uh, packages they have. What we are planning for is a grid down situation, whether that's caused by electrical magnetic pulse caused by a nuclear bomb detonated 400 or a thousand miles or 300 miles over the United States, or maybe two or three, which is what I anticipate happening because bombs on the East coast, central U S and West coast, you're going to be able to cover hundred percent of the U S and uh, make up for any people hiding behind the shadow of mountains and so forth. Cause you'll be able to hit uh, all the angles. So, I think that's probably what's going to happen. Do I anticipate the grid going down? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I anticipate the grid going down. Uh, it could also be caused from a chronal mass ejection or a sun flare. Uh, that would cause the exact same thing to happen. It's happened before. It could also happen like what happened here just a few weeks ago, where we had a big winter storm with heavy wet uh, snow, and it took the grid down for up to five days for thousands of people here in Idaho Falls area. So whatever the cause is and whoever causes it, it's going to happen. And, as, and maybe you have experienced it in short term or long term. I know in Texas, we were 14 days without any grid power. And by the way, we did fine. So what are you going to do when you can't use your cell phone? That's where, you know, people are going to shake their heads. I'm used to doing this. What's wrong? Well, you're going to be using a radio. So let's talk about what uh, radios you might need. These are the radios that you shared in the survey that you have. Uh, 13 people have family walkie-talkies or FRS radios. We'll talk about those, GMRS radios. Uh, we have people who have handheld, mobile, base stations, Bofangs, uh, HF base radios, and so forth. Some people don't have any radios. Some people, say, uh, one person said, we think uh, we will check. So definitely you want to have these, your ducks lined up in a row before a catastrophe happens. And you don't know when that's going to happen. Certainly the, when we had the snowstorm a few weeks ago, people didn't anticipate they'd be without power or communications for five days. 
this is what you have. We'll find out what you need. If you're looking to get an amateur radio, it's going to take a $35 fee and a written test. If you want to study for that test, you can do it free on, on your phone. Just download the app HAM Study, H-A-M Study. It's a free app. You can just go through all the questions, ace the test. When my wife took the test, she scored 100% on the test, and I don't think she had ever operated a radio at that time. So it's not that difficult. It's simply a filter, so everybody doesn't have a radio, which makes it more valuable to you in an emergency. So let's talk about high frequency or HF radios. You can be authorized to use the HF frequencies when you pass the $35 test. Some well-known brands and high-quality brands are Yezu, Icom, Kenwood, and there are several others. A 100-watt base station is pretty normal. This is what one might look like. And you can uh, literally talk worldwide or local. So if you look at the top part of the picture there, it says VHF radio. It also could be UHF radio. And that's what we call line of sight. You can see that uh, antenna tower shooting a um, beam, it's really really uh, antenna transmission, and it's horizontal. So the problem with VHF and UHF radios is that once it hits the curvature of the earth, it's going to stop because you can't go through the earth, or it may hit a building, or it may hit something else, or not have enough power to go the distance you want. With a HF, or high-frequency radio, it actually bounces up into the ionosphere and then it bounces back down onto the earth. So literally in the same town that I live in right now, I can talk to another HF amateur radio operator who lives a couple miles away from me with my HF radio. And without changing anything, I can talk to somebody in Florida, California, Hawaii, Canada, Mexico, Germany, Japan, anywhere in the world with an HF radio. Remember, whatever you have, the receiving person needs to have too. So the person I'm, I want to talk to also needs to have an HF radio. So we will talk more about that and what the costs are here a little bit further. But you can literally talk across the United States very easily or across the world. 50 watt mobile high frequency radio, generally speaking, for every one watt of power, you get one mile of distance. That doesn't apply to HF because we're bouncing that signal up off the ionosphere and down ar around the world. But uh, I can tell you for sure that a 100 watt radio will go further than a, a 50 watt radio, depending. You can still talk around the world with a 50 watt radio. I don't know if you can do it with a mobile radio. They have digital modes, and we're not going to get into that, but uh, digital modes for sure. You could talk around the world with digital on a, a mobile radio. But generally speaking, it's about one watt per mile. I'm not aware of any HF handheld radios, so I don't have any listed here. Okay, the next category is 2 meter or 70 centimeter, and that's just different frequencies. That's just like saying AM radio and FM radio. You can't get an AM radio on an FM frequency because there's a different frequency. So the normal everyday kind of use for amateur radio is going to be two meter or 70 centimeter is generally the second most used in a VHF, UHF. And these would be your, your base station or handhelds like Bofeng and, and Wushan. Here's a 50 watt base station. It's really just a mobile radio attached to or sitting on a power supply because base stations are d direct current, DC current. They run off batteries. So this uh, little device underneath the radio with the, the gauges on there, the meters on there, convert the AC power from the house over to the radio to DC power. So again, you get about 50 plus miles. Uh, with the, uh, and this will have an external antenna uh, mounted to the, a structure or to a tower. With uh, my 50 watt base station and my external antenna that I will give you a link to that I highly recommend, I go well, well over 50 miles without any problem, significantly further than 50 miles. All right, again, what's going to stop me is the curvature of the earth or hitting a mountain range or something like that. But as, if there's nothing in the way, I'm able to hit a, another ham radio operator 
basically it needs to be a line of sight. But my antenna needs to be able to, if it had eyes, see his antenna or her antenna. Uh, actually, here in Idaho and Utah and Arizona, there's called a inner mountain inner link. And I've spoken with people uh, on my 50 watt base station and also my uh, handheld hitting the repeater and talking to Arizona, uh, which is way more than 50 miles, but it's going through repeaters. None of that will work when the internet goes down. That completely shuts down. So using the same radio, you can have a 25 or 50 watt mobile radio, and it can be the same radio as your base station. That's what I use. I have one radio for my base station, and then when I go mobile, I just disconnect it from the, the power supply and put it in my car. So depending on how many watts you have in your radio, along with an external antenna on your car, you can get up easily up to 50 miles if you have line of sight. Then we have handheld radios. This particular, by the way, the radios I've been showing you are the, are the ones that my wife and I own and use. This is the radio that we really, this is our backbone of our system right here, this radio right here. I'll have more information on it a little bit later. So make sure you, you stay to the end so I can show you which radios I really recommend and which ones will, I think is the best bang for your buck. This happens to be a 10 watt handheld radio with that same external antenna that I'm using, I get well over 50 miles from the my house mounted antenna with that handheld radio. Because the quality of the radio, it is not an $18 radio. And the quality of the antenna and the quality of the coax cable connecting the two together, it's easy for me to cover the, significantly further than I need to talk. Handheld five to 10 watt radio without an external antenna, you probably get up somewhere between about five miles with the antenna that comes on the radio. So as we're going through this, these different items here, remember, who do you want to talk to? How far away are they from you that you need to reach them? And what technology do you want to use? The next is what's called GMRS. And that is a Midland, a Wushan again. Uh, here's a base station. Again, it's, it's a mobile radio attached to a power supply. This is just like AM, FM. It's different than two meter. It's different than 70 centimeters. And it's a different frequency than HF frequencies. There is no test required for this. There is a $35 fee and that's for a family. And that that license will last for 10 years. My wife, I, I purchased a GMRS license just like a purchase a fishing license. You do it on the federal re uh, website. And that will work for my wife, myself, our children, my siblings, my parents, my nephews, my nieces, my uncles, but not my cousins. That is a good license to have and a good radio uh, solution to have. You can get up to 50 miles with a base station and an external antenna. If it's mobile, you can probably get up to about 25 to 50 miles because the mobile antennas aren't as powerful as a house or a tower built antenna. Or you can use a handheld with an external antenna and get, like I mentioned in the video, up to 40 miles. Here, 15 miles with this particular radio with an external antenna. And that video is with the, the Three Angels video. That's the exact radio that we used. And I'll show you in that video which antennas we used. And we get clear, perfectly clear signals 15 miles away. If without an external antenna, you probably get about five miles if it's a uh, line of sight, you don't have a bunch of buildings and so forth in the way. So far, we've talked about amateur radios, HF, then two handheld radios, GMRS radios. The last is family radios. And these are what we call bubble wrap radios. It's what you see at Walmart. Pretty inexpensive. I do have a very specific recommendation because most of them are not worth your money. There's only one that I recommend, and I'll share that with you later on. With a family radio... They use the same frequencies as the GMRS radios. The, the way you know that it's a family radio is that the antenna cannot be removed. You cannot take the antenna off and put an external antenna on it. So if you have a handheld radio and you don't know whether it's GMRS or, or a family radio, an FRS radio, if you cannot remove the antenna without breaking it, then it's not, it's not a GMRS radio. That means it's limited to a maximum of two watts. And, and, most of the radios that the FCC have tested only get a quarter of a mile. And that's by intention 
because they're family radios. They're not commercial business radios, and they're only meant to go a short distance. However, the one that I recommend and use and own will easily go two miles and further. Now, I did make a video on do not buy this amateur radio unless, and this is the Bofang, and I probably own five or six of these radios, but please watch that video, do not buy amateur radio unless, to understand why I do not recommend buying a Bofang radio as your critical life-sustaining radio. It's a great radio to start with. You can It's 18 bucks. Just as a raw radio on Amazon, I'll give you a link to that. But for critical life-saving experience, I would not, I would not recommend that. I literally, literally stood next to somebody holding a Bofang radio and an enhanced antenna, and I was on my Wusan radio. They could not hear somebody about three miles away. I was talking to that person like we were standing next to each other. Are you willing to either pay for a family license or take a written test? I have 56.4% of the people said that, hey, I'm willing to take the test. I'll be glad to take the test and pay the $35 fee. Because of the people we surveyed and really the people that we this presentation was custom made for was a preparedness group who are like-minded, forward-thinking, and are wanting to get prepared before things happen that can, you know, they, they would need these resources. So I'm very optimistic, enthusiastic to see that so many people are interested in getting and willing to pay a license and take a test. Uh, 39% of the people said that they already have a test. I already have a license. Already, I'm already a technician. I'm a general. So they've already paid the, the $35 fee and taken the written test to have a amateur radio license. You only need to take a test if you're getting the amateur radio. Are you an active member of an organized radio group that does regular check-ins and training? At 36 responses. So 36 of the people who, who took the survey are interested in, in talking to families and friends on using the radio in an emergency. Unfortunately, only eight are currently active in a group. I'm telling you right now, this could be one of the most important things that you do. It is critical that you get involved with a, a regularly scheduled group check-ins. Just because you will need the motor skills, you'll be able to know where your batteries are. You'll know how to charge the radio. You'll know how to use the radio. You'll get personal training and help from the people in the group. It's absolutely critical that you get involved in a group. Now, it may be a family group, like with my my friends, the, my, the mother and the two daughters, or my other friend with his, his family and another family. And they, they do weekly checks with his whole network, all 12 houses every week to make sure that they can reach each other and so forth. So please be get involved, either create your own group with your family or neighbors or neighborhoods or church or community, whatever, or your, whatever it is, but you need it to be able to get a hold of each other. And then you have some questions. So let's go through these questions. Which radio should I buy? We will cover that here in a moment with the specific recommendations. Which category of radio you should buy? Hopefully, you've been able to determine that from what I've already shared with you. If you need to go local or worldwide, you need an HF radio. If you're looking to go 50 miles or more, you need a base station. If you need 15 miles or less, then a handheld will work. If you're looking just for talking to the family, then a, a FRS bubble wrap uh, radio would work. How to put in, change, or charge the radio batteries? Well, I've uh, been the father of four children with my wife, and none of them came with instruction manuals or owner's manuals or user manuals, but every single radio that I purchased, and I believe that is 42 to date, came with a user's manual. So if you want to know how to change or put in the batteries, take a look at the manual. How do I turn on the radio? Please refer to your manual. How to change the channel or frequency? Please refer to your manual. How to hold a radio for best results. This is a big problem I see with people that significantly will impact the, the whether you're going to be able to communicate with people or not. This is how not to hold a radio. If you can imagine if this person is talking and the radio, the radio signal doesn't come out of the top of the radio, it comes out of the side of that antenna. So with the, with the way that he has in, his antenna pointing, 
his transmission is going straight down to the ground and straight up to the atmosphere. And that is not an HF antenna, a radio. So uh, it's going to be, he's going to dramatically negatively impact how well he's going to be able to hear people where if he held his radio like this, where the antenna is straight up and the signal is going out from the size of the antenna, he's going to be able to hear people where other people will not be able to because they're simply holding the radio wrong. So please, when you're using your radio, hold the radio so the antenna is straight up. You notice that this person has the radio in front of their face, not next to it like a, like a cell phone or like a, a landline phone. Hold it in front of your face and talk past the radio. Don't talk into it, but kind of have the radio to the side and talk past it. If you talk into the mic, you're going to get a, a bunch of puffing sounds and whistling sounds. So just talk past it. Now, this person here almost has his finger on the antenna. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Your body actually is half of the antenna. Your body literally is working as half of the antenna. If you are touching the antenna and you're getting bad reception, make sure you take your finger off the antenna and you may get great reception. If you're getting really poor reception, go ahead and touch your antenna. You're not going to get shocked, but that may actually help with the reception. You never know, but if you're having troubles, do one way or the other, but just make sure that antenna is pointing straight up. What buttons do I push to talk on the radio? Again, please refer to your user's manual. How to know which channel or frequency to use for family, church, or work crews. Again, this is really important that you be part of a, a church group, a, a part of the family that you've already discussed which channels or which frequencies you will be using. If you call somebody's phone number, you have to call a specific number and get the digits right or you won't ring that person's phone. Same thing with a radio. You have to get the right channel, the right frequency at the right time when they have their radio on and listening in order to talk to them. So get that organized before that happens. Uh, how to know what time of day to use the radio. As, again, it's very important that you already have this figured out. At buy2wayradios.com, there is a great sheet. It's called the 333 radio plan. Basically, it boils down to every three hours for three minutes on channel three. So you can make up your own plan, but the point is, is to have a plan with your family, with the, your neighborhood, with your church, whatever it is. If the grid goes down, the cell towers go out, you already know what the plan is. You're going to turn to that frequency every three hours. You're going to listen to it for three minutes, and then it's going to be on whatever channel that you specify. That way you're conserving your battery. You'll find in emergency situations, which I've been in many times with a radio, is the battery is the weakest point. You'll run out of battery in critical situations. So make sure you have multiple batteries and large batteries. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But have your own plan. This 333 radio plan is an excellent plan. I highly recommend it. Okay, how did you program or find someone to program my radio? Well, I just did a quick check and found literally countless radio groups just in Utah. I just did a quick radio uh, group check. And here's one, uh, uh, Utah Amateur Radio Club. Here's another one in Utah Valley. There was another one in St. George. They're all over in every state, literally every state of the union. Join a group if you have uh, something in uh, common with people in the group. Like if you have a church radio group, that's great. If you've got just a ham radio group, that's great. If you've got a neighborhood radio group, that's great. But get part of a group and you'll find people who are smarter than you are and who can help you program your radio and get things ready. The nice thing about a, a GMRS or FRS radio, they'll work right out of the box. You don't need to program anything. Every other radio we talk to needs to be programmed. And that's easily done. I had a neighbor come over here yesterday. I programmed two radios for him in about five minutes. It took because it took me that long to get him out of the package, connect to my computer, and up and programmed them. But it, two radios in five minutes, and and uh, he was taken care of. But I already had the uh, software ready. Uh, we program all the radios the same. So what, channel 45 on his radio is the same as channel 45 on mine, and the same as uh, my neighbors. Okay, and all the other channels too. What do I do if I can't understand what is being said because of static? Excellent question. 
First of all, make sure your antenna is pointing straight up and make sure that your finger is either on or off. And if it's on, take it off. If it's off, put it on, see if that helps. Generally speaking, you're going to be using these in a grid down situation where you're not going to have a lot of RF uh, interference. And so it's just going to be a matter of whether your radio is strong enough uh, to pick up the signal. Uh, what do I do if I can't hear anyone? So if you already checked your antennas going straight up, the most important thing to do is pretend that you can see that person and move to a position in your house in front of a window or open open the doors or step outside. Stepping outside will make a tremendous difference if you're inside the house. But if it's 20 degrees below or even zero and the wind's blowing at or 32 degrees, you no one wants to be outside. That's why you want to have an external antenna. But the most important thing I'm trying to say is, is your antenna has to see their antenna. And so if you're on the north side of the house and you want to talk to your neighbor who's south of you, walk to the south of your house and stand by a window or open the door or go outside. Again, uh, what do you do if you don't hear anyone? Maybe nobody is on. Maybe you're on at two o'clock in the afternoon and everybody else is on at three o'clock. Make sure you have the plan and that you stick with the plan and everybody knows what the plan is. How to know how far my radio will transmit and receive. So this is critical because I live out in the county and there is a amateur radio repeater on a mountain at 9,000 feet, about 53 miles away from me. And I can hit that repeater with my handheld antenna, uh, handheld radio without an external antenna very easily because I have a good quality handheld antenna, a uh, radio. Uh, with the external antenna connected, it's even easier. But there's nothing in between me and the and the antenna that I'm trying to reach. You'll need to actually test it. You'll need to have somebody take a radio, and, and we've done this with several people. They'll put it in the car, and they'll put the radio in the car, and they'll drive around. They'll see how far they can actually reach. We were testing this with the mother and the two daughters, and with the mobile radio and the external antenna, I can get all the way from Ammon within one mile of the mother's house. And then I lost the connection. However, the mother at her house with the external antenna could easily get the 15, uh, 17 miles to her daughter's house. So you're going to have to test that, get in the car, walk the neighbor, whatever it is. You're going to have to test whatever distance that you need to reach and have you know the person at, at their home, your place, whatever it is, you're going to need to physically test that because each environment is different. How to get the best results when using a radio in a vehicle. What you want to do is for sure, absolutely have an external antenna. This is a magnetic mount antenna. I do not have permanently mount antennas on my cars. I don't like them. I don't like how they look. I think they, they scream, come steal my radio. And I only would be using them in an emergency. A magnetic mount antenna is going to give you just as good of a quality signal as a permanently mounted antenna. If you want a permanently mounted antenna, that's perfectly fine. But I'm letting you know that you don't have to have one. And there's different kinds. I'll tell you which ones I would recommend. Okay. I don't have any questions. This came from the relief site again. She's, she's a funny person. They put an emoji there. She doesn't have any questions because she doesn't know anything about radios because she's never used them. And she's, I think she has this normalcy bias that she will be texting everybody when the grid is down because she's got a, her battery charged on her cell phone and she's wondering why she, no one's answering back. So if you don't have any questions, you have to ask yourself, why don't I have any questions? Maybe I should have some questions. How do I actually use my radio to have someone help me use it? Again, that's going to happen easily when you're part of a community, a group of uh, radio operators. Foundational basics of all operations, comparisons, uses, advantages, and disadvantages of each. I actually made a video about this on my YouTube channel, and it's called Warden Community Emergency Communication Plan. This goes through in much more depth than we're going tonight, and, and I don't get geeked out at all. I just show you all, I outline very quickly the advantages of uh, HF radio, I mean, not HF, but um, amateur radio, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and so forth. After several weeks of testing, what we found. So take a look at that video if you want more information on comparisons and options and so forth and recommendations. How to begin a conversation with someone, how to let them know that we want to be 
get a conversation. First of all, you have to have a plan. Their radio has to be turned on for them to hear you. If you're calling them and their radio is not on, it's like a cell phone. If their cell phone is turned off, they're not going to get your call. So you need to organize that, plan that, schedule that before so they know that when the grid goes down, cell towers go down, to turn their radio on at a certain time and for so many minutes. Antenna setup. I have also have a great video on my YouTube channel, Family Emergency Radio Antenna Mounting Options. I show three different options and how to set up antennas on my house, a friend's house, and the mother's house where we did the mother and the two daughters. All three different op uh, ways to set up antennas. Very inexpensive and easy to do with just things you can get at Home Depot. Again, all those videos you can find at LDS Prepper on YouTube. Just go to ldsprepper.com. All right, so let's get into the radio recommendations. So if you are looking to go no further than two miles, then I would recommend this specific radio. I do not recommend the Unidens or any other brand of FRS radio. They market this particular radio as a GMRS radio. But as I mentioned before, it does not have a removable antenna. So that is actually a family radio. This is one of the only radios that the FCC has tested and shown that it has a full two watts output, where the other radios are more of a quarter of a watt. So for $79, you get two radios, you get charging stand, rechargeable battery packs that don't last very long at all. They will not last a day. However, you can use regular uh, rechargeable AA batteries or regular standard batteries that are non-rechargeable. It has a hard charger and also has a mic and headset. I like using mic and headsets especially in emergency situations, so I can hear clearly even if there's a lot of noise around me and the people around me cannot hear what I'm the information I'm being given if it uh, could be concerning to them, okay? So if you want to take a look at the uh, best price I found on that radio, go to ldsprepper.com slash GMRS radio. Which radio do I recommend for a GMRS radio? This, hands down, my primary radio that I recommend for a GMRS radio and I, I recommend getting the deluxe edition kit because you're going to get so much extras that you can be buying otherwise. And if you bought it separate, it would literally double the price. And if you just want the radio itself, it's $149.99. But the deluxe edition gives you one radio with 999 channels, 5.5 watts, which is the highest wattage I've seen in a GMRS handheld radio. It gives you two uh, 2,600 milliamp hour batteries. So there's, you have your second battery, which I like, belt clips, a speaker microphone, again, for privacy. Other people who are on the same radio frequency can hear, but the people around you aren't going to be able to hear if you have that earpiece in your ear. Car charger, battery eliminator, which means that you plug this cord into your cigarette lighter in your car, and you take out the battery in your radio, and it, the car battery acts as the, the radio battery. Leather case, never used it. Antenna connector. Why do you want an antenna connector? Because you want to be able to connect this radio to an external antenna, either on your house or a magnetic mount antenna, a permanent mount antenna on your vehicle. Headset, charging cable, and programming cable, which you'll uh, want to do to set up some other channels. For example, I set up the channels for the three ladies. I put in their ward emergency radio frequency, which happens to be ham radio or amateur radio, they can't talk on that frequency because the radio isn't able to do that because it's not licensed to do that, but they can hear all the communications going on. So if there is a ward barbecue because it's been three days with no grid and people's meat's going bad and we're going to have a ward barbecue, they would be able to know about it. They just couldn't respond, hey, I'm coming over the radio. To get this radio, the KG935G+, plus, go to ldsprepper.com, KG935G. Uh, what external antenna do I recommend? We test it a lot. I'm actually in my office right now, and I can see uh, six antennas right in front of me. And this little antenna outperformed all the other antennas that we tested for GMRS. It's a nice, compact antenna, about the height of a pack of cigarettes. You'll need to get the mobile antenna and then also the mag mount. Make sure you get the uh, Mellow Wave brand GMRS antenna, and then the Mellow Wave 
NMO magnetic antenna mount. So you want to get the MNO antenna and the NMO magnetic mount. That's just kind of the connection. That's all that means. To get those or to either look at it, go to ldsprep.com slash mellow wave. This has been an incredible antenna. Now, I have a friend who spent four or $500 on his antenna, and I spent $134 on my antenna, and this antenna performs exactly like his four or $500 antenna. I've been using this antenna. I use this antenna in Texas. I use it here in Idaho. Anybody who wants to have me help them help get the antenna set up on the house, this is the one I recommend if they're using GMRS or uh, amateur radio. I highly recommend this antenna. You will need to get quality cable. So to get the antenna, go to ldsprep.com slash tram1481. That specific antenna is incredible. It needs no tuning at all. It's, you just put the three people pieces together, wrap some watertight tape around the joints, and mount it on your chimney or on some PVC pipe or fence railings, something like that, with a high-quality cable and you will be able to go well like i said my little handheld radio goes 50 miles easily with that antenna all right what do i recommend for a handheld hands down this radio right here the rusan ocean kg uv 9d mate there are different models out there this is a specific one that i recommend this is the one that my wife and i are counting on there's too many features in here to go over in this presentation. Watch my other video on don't buy amateur radio unless, because I go into all the details on this specific radio. But this is a 10 watt radio, which the Bofangs are 5 watt at best. They don't put out 5 watts, but you know that's what they're rated at. But this is the one where I stood next to my friend who had the Bofang with the high amp antenna. And he couldn't hear somebody, and I could hear them like we were standing next to each other. I really like the uh, anniversary edition. Again, you're going to save a lot of money uh, because of the accessories it comes with. Uh, and again, it comes with a two high uh, amperage, 32 milliamp rechargeable batteries and all the other gadgets and everything. If you want a reliable, dependable radio that with uh, long-lasting batteries, good quality, a sound transmission receive, this is the radio I recommend. I'm not saying others aren't better or worse. I'm just saying that you can pay two or three or four times more and not get a better radio. Here is the uh, Bofang. Now, this specific package is what I recommend because you'll notice that it has the two 3,800 milliamp batteries. The batteries run out when you're in an emergency situation hard to cons uh, conserve battery power because you need to be connected. You need to be communicating. You need to be on the air to hear messages. Having these 3,800 milliamp batteries is very, very important. Also has the headsets. Also comes with a amplified uh, high gain antenna. And it's, it's a very good package. So ldsprepper.com slash bowfang. The external car mount antenna that I recommend for amateur radio is the Tram 1180. It is a significant gain antenna. So that antenna will actually triple the output power of your radio. So if you have a 5 watt radio and you're transmitting through that antenna, you're actually transmitting at uh, up to 15 watts because the the way that it's uh, designed. So this specific antenna and this specific mount. Go to ldsprep.com slash tram 1180. If you're looking for a, a mobile antenna for your vehicles, my wife has this radio and that a magnetic mount and antenna. So do I. And then we also have the home based antennas. So we can both be in different vehicles and be talking to each other, even though we may be going different locations. What radio do I recommend for a mobile or base station after spending, I won't say, we'll just say considerable amount of money and time testing radios. This is the one that I own. This is the KG UV 920P dual band 50 watt base station mobile radio. The only difference between a base station and a mobile radio 
is the mounting brackets to mount it into your vehicle and the power station to convert AC power to DC power. This kit even comes with a antenna. This is a great kit. It's at, a, I think, a great price because you'd be able to have both a home setup and a car setup for $369.99 right now. Go to ldspower.com slash UV920P to take a look at that. You can program this so that you can re uh, receive GMRS, FRS, amateur radio, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, MURS, police station, fire station, trains, hospitals, schools, all those frequencies are out there. And those can all be programmed in so you can listen or transmit uh, on those frequencies. The UV920P, the starter kit will get you everything you need to get started, except for the external antenna. So this is the external antenna. Again, the same antenna I recommend before. And then here's a link to the cable. If you have a great an antenna and a great radio and lousy cable in between, you're going to have a bad experience. As far as uh, amateur radio HF or high frequency base stations that you can communicate locally and worldwide. Like I mentioned, I can talk to my uh, neighbor here in, in my town or I can talk to somebody in Florida or Japan on the same radio. Here we're looking at $1,000 Plus, easily on these two radios, these are both high, uh, high quality radios. But as you can see, both of them have all, uh, looks like almost all five stars. The world of HF radio is amazing. It's a great hobby. I'm not really a hobbyist. I use it as a tool. But it, once you get on HF radio and you have the right frequencies, you will be amazed at how much emphasis that the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, puts on emergency communications. They are testing communication capabilities with every bishop storehouse across the United States every single week. If there's an emergency, they know that it works. If it's that important to the church, it may be important to, or maybe it should be important to us. So let's go and cover any questions that I hadn't answered at, during the presentation. The question is, if you have a satellite phone and you want to send a text message to a cell phone and that cell phone does not have cell service, if that cell phone can get that text message from the satellite phone, the answer is no, because that phone doesn't have any, that cell phone doesn't have any service. That cell phone needs to be able to receive a signal. So if that cell phone had a bivy stick, then yes. They, you could text from your mobile phone, I mean, from your satellite phone to the regular cell phone number. It would come from your, your satellite phone to their satellite bivy stick to their, to their cell phone. But just like you can't call anybody if, you know, I mean, if you had a cell phone and, it were, and you had cell phone reception and they had, did not have cell phone reception because they're driving through a canyon, you can't talk to them. Same thing. Okay. Just because you have satellite service doesn't mean they do. Good question. If the grid goes down, will the satellite still work? Yes. So I don't know if there'll be a target or what, but they have backup on backup on satellite. I actually have satellite internet because I believe the internet's going down and I want to have internet. So I have satellite internet. Will the satellite phone still work with satellites when the grid is down? Yes. Is it a good idea to know Morse code? Great question, Candace. I deliberately never got my amateur radio license because I was so afraid of learning Morse code. If you uh, want to learn Morse code, that'd be, that could be fun. It could be a great thing to do. It's not required to get a license for amateur radio. There are some people who do Morse code. The advantage of using Morse code is it uses very, very, very little power. And so you can Morse code around the world when other people are not able to audibly talk to each other. However, what's really come into favor lately is the digital modes of radio. Digital mode also uses very little bandwidth or power, but you can actually send text messages or even documents with digital. If you want to go for Morse code, great, but it looks like most people are going towards digital on amateur radio. Which HF radio do I have? It is the ICOM 7300.
Robin wants to know if a 100 watt would be a better home base station. A uh, 100 watt is going to be for an HF radio. And you're not going to have 100 watt on amateur radio in 2 meter or 70 centimeter, which is what the majority of local people will be using. They'll be using the 2 meter and 70 centimeters. Again, don't get worried about what that means. Just This is like just using a different term like AM or FM. But those are the frequencies that they're on. So for most communications, you're going to want to use, for local communications, you're going to want to use 2 meter and 70 centimeters. And I went over those uh, devices in the presentation. But a 100 watt HF radio can be better than a 50 watt. But depending on what mode you're using, you can actually communicate around the world on 10 watts digital on HF. As far as 2 meter and 70 centimeter, I have a 25 watt base station mobile unit that's 2 meter and 70 centimeters. And even with my high quality external 14 foot tall, 30 foot high antenna outside my house, I was not able to hear about half the people on my weekly radio net. It was a low quality, inexpensive radio, and I got what I paid for. Switched to a good quality Wusan 50 watt base station, the one that I showed you, the 920P, and I I'm rock solid. People tell me every well, not every week. They they tell me a lot that I'm coming through very strong. So I do recommend getting a 50 watt radio for amateur radio and and just get the um the the ocean or wusan however it's pronounced 920 p or the starter kit and you'll have everything you need for a base station at home it, when you when you get the tram external antenna but it comes with the ac dc converter and the mounting brackets for your car and the the magnet magnetic mount for your car too so that's a good, great way to start i own that radio I like that radio for many reasons. I won't get into because I don't want to make this too long. All the reasons are covered in my on my video on don't buy amateur radio unless. I go into a lot of detail on that radio. Love that radio. I will mention this. We can set that radio up at my house as a repeater. So my wife could be driving 50 miles south and I could be driving 50 miles north. Our mobile radios in our cars with our external antennas. And we could literally be talking to each other 100 miles away because of the capability of that 920p. So I highly recommend that radio. Does the Wushan 9 UVD mate? Okay, so the mate. Does it come with a programming cable? Generally speaking, the radios do not come with a programming cable. If you buy the deluxe kit or the anniversary kit, it does come with a programming cable. If you're going to get it programmed, you'll need a programming cable. My neighbor who came over yesterday does not have a programming cable, but I have several of them because I do a lot of programming. So if you're going to have someone program for you, it'd be nice if you had your own cable, but they may have a cable for you. But you will need a cable, and it does not come when, with one as a standalone radio. It does with the deluxe kit or anniversary kit. The statement in question is that the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints has antennas on top of the the office buildings in downtown Salt Lake, will that help people communicate in the valley? It will not help you one bit at all. You don't have access. You don't have the right frequency. You don't have the right tones. <laughs> you don't have the right offsets and all the other stuff you don't understand. Those are not made for public use. So no, those will not work. And we are talking about a grid down situation where repeaters will not be working. So don't count on repeaters and don't count on somebody else. Set up your own network and without repeaters and make sure that they're working between you and the people that you want to talk with. Okay, so CB radios. Yes, I, I didn't cover that because they're so far and few between. Uh, they're great for truckers because they don't need to go very far. A lot of truckers have hacked them so they go further and that's, you know, that's fine. Nothing wrong with doing that. But there is much better technology, and we're talking about little $18 radios that will go twice as far as a CB radio that could cost several hundred dollars. What I want to point out from this question is, if somebody has a CB radio and you want to talk to them, 
you have to have the same equipment. You need to have a radio that transmits and receives and the CB frequencies. You can't have an amateur radio or a GMRS radio and you, you will not be able to talk. You can't hear an FM station, radio station on the AM dial. They're separate frequencies. So if you want to be able to communicate with your husband and he has CB, you're going to need to have a CB, but you're not going to be able to communicate very far. If he had uh, another antenna on his car with a, in his truck like an amateur radio and had a 50-watt base station uh, or mobile station and you had one at home with an external antenna, you'd be able to talk for quite a distance. If you have any questions, feel free, without any hesitation, to give me a call. Please do not ever email me. I get over 300 emails a day. It will take me forever to even, if, uh, even if I find your email to reply. Don't hesitate to call. Whether you're listening to this training live or not, you can go to my store, ldsprepperstore.com. My phone number is there, and it's give me a call. If it's not Sunday or if I'm not in bed asleep, I'm answering the phone. I don't screen my calls, and I'm glad to help. I've heard, helped church leaders across the United States, uh, actually in other countries, countless families in the Idaho, Utah area, and many more throughout the United States and around the world. Answer, uh, get questions answered, clarify. This can be a considerable expense, and you don't want to buy the wrong radio and find that it doesn't work when you could have bought the right radio and saved money because then you wouldn't have had to spend the money on the wrong radio. So feel free to get a hold of me. I'm glad to help. And if there's a better solution out there than what I've recommended, I will certainly tell you. Again, thank you very much. This is David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper, reminding you, if you are prepared with emergency, family, community, church communications, you shall not fear what's coming.